topic of the day is extraction. The key verse is 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Therefore, go out from there amidst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing, then I will welcome you. The affirmations are, the Lord is distracting all the negativity. Jesus loves me. I am separating myself from idle minds. My mind is an idol. I'm pretty sure we all know about the crushing of olives. One of the most important stages of creating oil is the extracting process. It's cleaning the olives and removing the stems and leaves and twigs and other debris left from the olives. Some of us are going through that same process now and God is just removing the negativity out of our life. The wrong people out of our life. This is the process we must go through to be able to carry the anointing and to be able to grow in God. The distraction is the critical process for us all. Sometimes it might feel that we can't go on, but friends, we can. It might hurt. It might become the worst part of our life at the moment. But once we are through and we fully surrender, we will have more peace during the extraction. Extraction. Second Corinthians 6 and 17. Therefore, go out from their midst and be separated from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing, and I will welcome you. We can't possibly walk in a fresh anointing or a new mantle and still handle the things of the world that we see as being good and okay to do. If it's not aligned with the scripture, it isn't right. We can't place ourselves in the environment or around people that are un unclean and say we are going to carry the anointing of God. No, ma'am, no, sir, we can't. God is looking for a generation of people or people to carry his anointing is willing to leave the, the fleshly things of the world alone. God is looking for people that will praise when things seem to be going wrong. God is looking for people that won't say yes to the flesh, but still say yes to Jesus. In Titus 3 and 10, as for the people, as a person who stirs up division after warning him once and then twice and have nothing more to do with them. Anyone that stirs division, anyone that is willing to pull you from your calling, to keep you from praying, warn them once what your intentions are with your life. Warn them again, nothing to, and then have nothing to do with them. If that person continues to be a distraction and cause division in your life, we have to be bold when it comes to temptation. We must be, it must be vital when it comes to, to temptation to say no. God doesn't want lukewarm people. He wants people that are okay with telling the world no and keep going. How many of us are ready to say no to the flesh and yes to God? In Ephesians 5.11 says, take no part in the unfaithful works of darkness, but instead expose them. During your extraction, we are learning not to take part of the works of the darkness. We must expose the darkness in our lives. We can't continue to go around trying to deliver people when we need deliverance ourselves. We can't run around and tell people what they should and shouldn't do when we are doing the same exact thing, people of God. The Holy Spirit is saying to us now to clean your house of darkness and allow the things of the Spirit to flow through you and to you. If you're not ready for it, don't touch the plow, my friends. Don't touch the anointed of God and turn away. My mother used to tell me that. And at the time, I had just got saved. And it was annoying. It was literally annoying to hear her say, Lou, don't touch the plow. It was at that time I didn't want to hear it because I knew at least I thought I did. I thought I knew that I didn't need to hear this, that I would not turn around. But I didn't know what my mother knew. She knew the enemy was coming for me, and he did. And I kept what she said in my mind. The Holy Spirit helped me to stay focused because it happened. It happened to us all. Sometime in another in our life, the enemy comes. And when he comes, he rushes us so hard that we don't expect what he do. He does things that you never thought he would do. But when the enemy sees a person with a calling on their life, he would do anything to distract and distract them from God. Don't allow the enemy to pull you back. 
2 Thessalonians 3, 6 says, Now we command you, brothers, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the traditions you received from us. I had to learn that I need to pray when everyone else was, was doing whatever they wanted. I had to learn that while, while everybody ate, I had to fast. I had to learn that when everybody else wanted to sleep, I had to praise God because it was key to building a relationship with God. I had to learn to stay away from idle people. When a person is idle, it's just like a computer or a phone, friends. When a computer is idle, it's going to sleep. It is stationary because it's not being used. And when we meet people that are of the mindset, they are that, of that type of mindset, they are spiritually sleeping. They refuse to be used by God and they refuse to change. Please avoid these people, people of God, because they will do all they can to block you during your extraction. They will do all they can to block you from your anointing. They will do all they can to block you from carrying the word of God in your soul. Today, if you feel like you are being extracted and it's tough and you don't understand what's happening, ask the Holy Spirit and he will tell you. He will hear you and help you. We must be willing to submit to God. We must be willing to listen and do as he, as we are told. God won't allow us to go through without swaying. But we must be willing to listen. Listen to him and apply all your idle time to connecting to him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you for distracting us from a lifestyle of sin and people that aren't good for us. God, we ask you to help us to lean on you. Help us to hear you when you speak. Father, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for always loving us and protecting us. We thank you for allowing us to understand you. Lord, we give you every part of our lives. Lord, as we go through our day, continue to remove people from our lives, remove negativity, and remove the wrong things. Remove anything that's distracting us from you. Remove it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Reference verses are 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. We do not be deceived. Bad company ruins good morals. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. 1 Peter 2 and 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy, holy nation, a person for his own possession that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 and 9. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Since we have these promises, beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bring holiness to completion in the fear of God. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1. Further reading. Philippians 4. 1 Peter 2. And Joshua 19. Surrender Ministries is always dedicated to helping the community grow. If you ever need prayer, don't be afraid to contact me day or night. I will pray for you. If you need advice, if you need understanding of verses of scripture, we will pray and ask God to lead you in the right direction and give us sound knowledge. Please continue to follow. If you want to know when a new episode come out, click the bell at the left corner of the app. If you want um, the devotion sent to your email, please go onto the website and I will send you a copy to your text message, email, or Facebook. I pray you all are having a good night. We're going to close our affirmations. The Lord is distracting all the negativity. Jesus loves me. I am separating myself from idle minds. My mind is an idol. I pray wherever you are that you be blessed and that you continue to stick with the distraction because it's the most important part of growing in the Lord. Please be blessed.